Hello friends, this video on surface chemistry part 26 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. As I told, in the electrosmosis, the solvent will move in the opposite direction. See, the expected behavior of colloidal particle was to move in from left to right. So in this case, what will happen? Since you have put a membrane here, the solvent will move in this opposite direction. The water molecule will move in this direction. It will move up. This is called electrosmosis. Now we'll talk about coagulation, coagulation or precipitation. See, coagulation can be done by these methods. It can be done by electrophoresis, by mixing two opposite charged souls, by boiling, by persistent dialysis, or by addition of electrolytes. Before that, let's understand what is coagulation. See, the lyophobic souls, as I told, if I'm talking about the lyophobic souls here, please. See, lyophilic souls are anyway stable, right? Because they love their solvent. But lyophobic souls, they don't love their solvent. Correct. Somehow they are forced to love their solvent. So they are forced to form this uh, colloidal solution. But somehow, and the way, the their reasons, their electrolytes actually, which helps them to uh, form this colloidal solution. Correct. This is the charge on this lyophobic, uh, I'll say, particles, which helps to form lyophobic souls. But somehow, if you remove this charge, what will happen? These lyophobic souls will segregate and form a bigger chunk and will all settle down. And this settling down is called coagulation or precipitation. They'll settle down under the force of gravity. This process of settling down of colloidal particles is called coagulation. Please note it's only for lyophobic. See, as I told, this is my lyophobic particle, right? So this particle hates my solvent. But now, since it has some charge on it, right? Now these other lyophobic particles will also have some charge on it, right? They will repel each other. And somehow, because of Brownian movement and other factors, they'll be in the solution. As a um, the colloidal will be uh, stable. But now, if somehow you remove this charge, you remove these charge. What will happen is this is one particle. This is one particle. They'll come in touch with each other. They'll form a bigger particle. And this bigger particle will fall down with the force of gravity. You'll get this right. So this will combine actually form a bigger particles and then they'll coagulate. And there are different ways through which I can do the coagulation. Electrophoresis, mixing two opposite charge salts, boiling, dialysis, and addition of electrolytes. Let's see the first method of electrophoresis. Then this is also for the lyophobic, the one which hates solvent. Okay. So as I told, the reason of the stability of the colloidal particles in, uh, in the lyophobic sol is my charge here. If you remove this charge, they will coagulate. So what happens is, with the electrophoresis, what happens is, these colloidal particles are deposited here. Right? This colloidal particles am, is my, let's suppose, black. This gets deposited here. So once it is deposited here, since it has a positive charge at being adsorbed, and there's a huge negative potential. This negative potential will suck away all the positive charge. So this, this colloidal particle will be devoid of any charge now. So once it is deposited here, it will not have any charge. Hope you understand. See, this colloidal particle has this positive charge adsorbed on its surface. Now, when it comes to this negative potential using uh, electrophoresis, this negative potential will suck away all these charge. It will take away all this charge. Right, because potential is huge negative potential, it will take away all the positive charge. Right, negative and positive becomes neutral, it will become powerless. There is will not, will not be any charge. Since there will not be any charge, it will coagulate. That is one way. The next way is to mix two sorts of opposite charge. There is colloidal particle one, colloidal particle two. They are mixed. This has a positive charge, this has a negative charge. If you mix these two, positive, negative, positive, negative, all become neutralized, right? All become neutralized. So in this case, this positive charge 
that is that was adsorbed and the negative charge that was adsorbed on these two particles is gone since these two particles are now chargeless there is no power they will easily coagulate right example is this is let's suppose uh, my feoh3 that is a positively charged sol and this is arsenious sulfide as2s3 that is a negative charged sol when you mix this two the coagulation happens it's called mutual coagulation because mutually they are removing each other's charge right it's called mutual coagulation again for life away because these particles hate the solvent so the moment the charge is gone they hate the solvent they'll come out this is the charge which is forcing these uh, uh, particles to be in the solvent the next is boiling see when you boil also what happens when you boil the adsorbed layer is, is disturbed right this this charge get disturbed because of the heat they, they they are disturbed and they move out right because of the when you heat the kinetic energy of the system increase the kinetic energy of the system increase the, the particles move at a higher speed they move at a higher speed this this positive charge whatever was there here or the negative charge whatever was adsorbed by these particles colloidal particles gets removed since the particles get removed they again settle down this is also for the lyophobic since they hate each other since the particles hate the solvent but the only reason why these particles were in the solvent was because of the charge that was adsorbed by these particles on heating this charge is gone this, since this charge is gone these particles coagulate easily the next is persistent dialysis see what we have seen is this charge which we have in this particular particle this is the particle and this has all this charge right positive charge let's suppose this charge come from where this charge come actually from the electrolytes right so if i do persistent dialysis and that is electrolysis here i'll remove all the electrolytes if all the electrolytes are removed under the influence of electric field these charges gone because these charges coming from the electrolytes if the electro i'm doing a persistent dialysis like for a long time a prolonged dialysis i'm doing a prolonged or persistent dialysis what happening is this charge are getting removed because this charge are being uh, uh, taken by these uh, potentials right this charge is not there since there is no charge this particle this is my colloidal particles this is my colloidal particle this will get divided of any charge and will coagulate and settle down easily again this is also for the lyophobic solution because lyophobic the, the colloidal particles hate the solvent the only reason why they were in the solvent was because of this charge right this charge was the only reason why they were in the solvent because of the prolonged electrolysis this charge is gone this charge is gone because the charge is taken away by this electrode potentials and thus it coagulate the next is by adding electrolytes see again what happens is if you add excess electrolytes See, some electrolytes are required for these because the stability the good part is this this lyophobic right the lyophobic salts are stable only when they are sufficient number of electrolytes if you have less number of electrolytes they are unstable if you have more electrolytes they are also once unstable right so if you, if you don't have electrolytes there won't be any charge here there won't be any charge there won't be any reason for these particles to love the solvent so they'll coagulate if there are more electrolytes what happens is when the electro excess electrolytes are added these colloidal particles they precipitate and the reason is these colloid particles they interact with the ions that carry opposite charge example this is positive and i am adding excess electrolyte this is my excess electrolyte so excess electrolyte will have a lot of negative charge also right this is an interact with these and these negative charge will actually neutralize this positive charge and since it is all neutralized now this is a colloidal particle and this is a lyophobic particle now this lyophobic particle will say no i don't love solvent i'll come out and they'll coagulate and it'll settle down as per gravity right so in this case we use electrolytes for example if i have a positive charge colloidal particle i have to add negatively charged electrolytes to precipitate so now we have seen that how uh, excessive electrolytes carrying opposite charge 
to what you have in a collide particles can make this uh, collide particles or the colloidal solution coagulate right now see if i have a colloidal solution and if i add for example al if i have let's suppose a negative colloidal solution right and let's suppose uh, this case i have a positive colloidal solution in this i have various options if i add let's suppose po4 3 minus or if i add so4 2 minus or if i add cl minus do you think will it have same effect no why because this case has more charge lesser charge lesser charge right so for this there is a rule called hardy kluge rule so based on the based on the observation this rule has been formulated and it has been observed that the greater the valence of the coagulating ions because this is my coagulating ions the excessive ions excessive ions which i'll be adding right or also called coagulating ions right here because these ions are responsible for coagulation right greater is the power on these coagulating ions more is the coagulation correct similarly if i had let's suppose a negative colloidal particle then in that case i would have add i would have added positive charged coagulating ions for example i would have added maybe al3 plus maybe ba2 plus na plus so these guys if you see it has plus 3 charge plus 2 charge plus 1 charge right so obviously this has more coagulating power now let's suppose i have this colloidal solution right i need to add these coagulating ion correct the moment you add coagulating ions in this this colloidal solution coagulate correct so there has to be some minimum number of this coagulating ions or minimum number of these uh, electrolytes because th the electrolytes actually gives this uh, coagulating ion so minimum amount of electrolytes that is required to cause coagulation in two hours please note they have given the time stamp of two hours because i mean if you add electrolytes and if it takes two days or five days for coagulation it doesn't make sense so they have to fix time also so the minimum concentration of electrolytes and the concentration of electrolytes has to be in millimoles per liter so electrolytes in millimoles per liter right electrolytes in millimole liter to bring about coagulation in two hours so that is called coagulating value correct so minimum amount of let's suppose uh, cl minus required for a positive charge colloidal solution to coagulate in two hours that will be the coagulating value Right? So smaller the quantity needed, that means the higher the coagulating power of the ion. Because see, Cl minus will have some other coagulating value, SO2 minus will have some other coagulating value, PO4 3 minus will have some different coagulating value. But for let's suppose I have, I mean, coagulating value of Cl minus is let's suppose 10, let's, I'm just assuming Cl minus is 10, then SO4 2 minus will be less, it may be 7 or 6 and PO4 3 minus maybe even 3 right? because see Cl minus 1 ion will give 1 negative charge but in this SO4 2 minus 1 ion will give 2 charge and PO4 3 minus 1 ion will give 3 charge right 3 negative charge so coagulating value is nothing but the minimum concentration of electrolytes required in millimoles per liter to bring about the coagulation in Two hours coagulation or precipitation you can use any other terms in two hours that is called coagulating value right so for a given collateral solution if uh, coagulating value of uh, using cl minus is 10 then for s of 4 to minus it will be less correct because the smaller the value more is the coagulating power thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos Attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.